spend another minute, yes, another minute on Joy Reid. It's a TikTok situation until her ass is fired. It's just, there's no way MSNBC, which is in a full meltdown now about how bad their losses were, there's no way they can keep this woman. I don't, like... I- Megyn Kelly is going all in on Joy Reid, delivering some sharp criticism aimed directly at her. Megyn Kelly doesn't hold back, and Joy Reid's controversial takes are right in her crosshairs. Let's dive into what Megyn Kelly had to say about Joy Reid. I realize they're in the same problem that the Democrat Party is, like, they have a base that they need to keep. But she and her little friend, Ellie Mistel, are truly the most racist people on television. So you might be thinking, Megan, what's the, what kind of issue are we having here? I think that Sonny Hostin is the most racist person on television. Uh, and I think we should have a, I think we should have an open You're giving me something honest... to think about. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say you're not in the running with that one. I'm not going to dismiss that out of hand. But I still like my odds, like, especially the pair of them, Joy Reid mm-hmm. and Ellie Mistel together. I mean, it's, it's amazing to watch. Like, you really can't believe that they're allowed to say the things they say it's insane. on her show and also her Instagram. Like, her Instagram is so full. The one that I, I think was talking about that day, there were a couple of clips of her, but we were hearkening back to a clip in which I think it was on her Instagram. She was mocking white women's tears. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, white, white women. Oh. Hey. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot. Uh, I just want to give some free advice to um, uh, the white progressives, particularly white progressive women who may be thinking about um, marching against the Trump victory, um, maybe putting back on the P-word hats and doing that thing. I-, I would just say probably don't send any of those invites to any black women you know. Um, I- I'm just going to tell you right now, they're not coming. <laughs> like, uh, I- I'm pretty sure black women have resigned from the Save America Coalition, Save Democracy Coalition, and definitely the Save the Democratic Party Coalition. I think that's probably not happening. I would just keep those invites maybe among your own friends because <laughs> I don't think I don't think they're coming. Um, but yeah, I think black um, women are now on the Save Black Women, uh, Prioritize Black Men, and Prioritize Black Communities, Black Businesses, and, and that. Uh, and, you know, the black spaces, but save America, save the Democratic Party. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine if when I was on Fox News in the prime time, if I was like, oh, look at the black women crying over George Floyd. Oh, the black woman. Mm-hmm. Gym. Can you imagine? I would have been fired so fast. Yep. But she can get away with doing that to whites. Wait, why again? Because MSNBC and NBC allow blatant racism on their airwaves every single night. She's not the only purveyor of it. She just happens to be the worst. Also, I'm pretty sure she's not a natural blonde. Oh, my God. Do, like, weren't we lectured by people like Joy Reid about white women who want to wear the braids? It's a no. That's why when we went to the Bahamas for like 10 years, we couldn't have our child's hair with the braids that the Bahamian women would love to charge you $100 to put in their head. But you're not allowed to help the Bahamian women because Joy Reid will call you a racist if she sees your child and her white hair in the braids. Then we were told you can't make yourself look like a Latina or as JLo says, uh, Latino, Latino. They all speak like completely without any Puerto Rico yeah. accent until they get to their words and then they want to remind you, Latino. Anyway, we were told you're not allowed to like wear the, the lip liner or the big hoops and you can't have like, because that's all appropriation. And as a white woman, you're not allowed. So why can Joy Reid have the white hair, have the bright blonde hair? For a while there, it was long and it looked exactly like Donald Trump's. And now she's gone closer crop to find, which is what leftist women are doing. They're shaving off their hair to prove mm-hmm. that they're leftists. P.S. We could tell by your <laughs> sour face. You didn't need to shave off all your. We're good. We got it. I, your enormous right, these, glasses. These women. These are my readers, Dave Rubin. <laughs> it's what a normal person gets when they need a reader. It's like the the liberal glasses yeah. are. <laughs> So ugly. <laughs> Mark Cuban started looking like Rachel Maddow. It's like, what the hell's going on with these people? It's like they think it's cool to be unattractive. It is not cool, Joy Reid. Grow your hair out and act like a grown up. And we already knew you were leftist before you shaved off all your hair. I don't think it's worth going into Ellie Mizell or whatever his name is, Miss Stahl, but I will say he looks like half fat Albert, half uh, Albert Einstein. He looks like one of those little trolls, you know, with like the hair. 
Megyn Kelly makes a compelling argument, and honestly, I have to agree with her stance here. Joy Reid's way of speaking, especially on MSNBC, often crosses the line into divisive rhetoric. If a host on any network mocked tears from another racial group, the backlash would be swift, and rightly so. The double standards at play here are glaring, and it's difficult to ignore the hypocrisy. MSNBC should seriously reconsider allowing this kind of commentary on their platform. It's one thing to have strong opinions. It's another to generalize and mock entire groups of people based on race. That doesn't foster dialogue or understanding. It just fuels division. Reed's comments, both on her show and her social media, come across as inflammatory, and they undermine any meaningful conversation about race or equality. Megyn Kelly is spot on when she points out that if the roles were reversed, the consequences would be immediate and severe. It's hard to argue with the logic that media outlets need to hold everyone to the same standard, regardless of political or ideological leanings. If MSNBC wants to maintain credibility and foster constructive discourse, they should address these issues and make it clear that racism in any form is unacceptable, even when it aligns with their audience's biases. At the end of the day, a network's responsibility is to provide honest, unbiased reporting and facilitate conversations that bring people together, not tear them apart. It's time for MSNBC to take accountability.